Hi guys, I'm Amy Frazier, founder of CNOW, which stands for City Night of Worship, and you're tuning in to the Worship Table podcast. This is a CNOW podcast comprised of many different worship leaders, creatives, and songwriters here in Oklahoma City area. CNOW is a nonprofit ministry, 501c3, that ministers to worship creatives all over the city by providing community events, worship nights, and lunches, and just different ways where we can connect as a body of Christ. Uh, this podcast you're tuning in today is about writing Christmas songs. So we have worship uh, leaders and songwriters all over the city that love to write Christmas songs, and they're giving us some helpful hints on how to do so. So hopefully we'll learn a lot today. Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. Yeah. It's exciting. I love when Christmas comes. Christmas carols are out at 104.1, blaring songs all the time. Yeah, yeah. Christmas is in the atmosphere. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine used to talk about how it's the one time of year that believers and non-believers are all singing about this Jesus and God and the child that's born. So That's true. It is an interesting time of, you know, that uh, timing of that happening. And it, so, yeah. I love that. Yeah, so Christmas true. songs. Yeah, you got a Christmas song that you like that you've written uh, that I like. No, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I wrote one a couple of, or recorded one a couple of years ago, and uh, you know, when you look at uh, wow, Christmas writing a Christmas song, I mean, think of how many ways you can go. You know, um, musically, I mean, you could uh, it could be pop, it could be worship, it could be uh, choral. I mean, there's so many ways you could go, and. Um, and then the message, what, what do you want in that message? You know, uh, so I was just having one of those creative days and, um, at home, a uh, little home studio and, and started out with kind of a, a hip hop nice. Christmas, you know? Um, and basically it's just, I wish it was Christmas today. Mm-hmm. I wish that it was Christmas. I wish that it could be, I'd wake up every morning as happy as could be, you know, but, uh, it it talks you know about the the turkey and the hammy and all those you know, the trimmings and the fun and the and the presents. But toward the end, it says you know it it says uh, we know what this is the season. You know what it's about. You know yeah. so it gives a little it gives a reference at the end. But it it, it didn't really delete anything. I did a little ho ho ho. You know, had a couple of guys in the front go, oh, yeah, come on, we. <laughs> so kind of put it all in there, you know, as far as it, something I would use in the church that much, probably not. Would I like it to hit a Hallmark movie? Yeah, maybe, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I love it because one of the things I've thought about is we've been thinking about getting together and talking about Christmas songs is, is there's always an element in a lot of songs of that familiarity. Yeah. yeah. And you were talking about the smells and the food and, and then the, that whole spirit of, oh, I wish it was Christmas. I can't yeah. wait till it's Christmas. The anticipation. anticipation yeah. 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 And all of that. So I love that, that, you know, you got into those, the smells and bells of, of what Christmas was to you. And yeah, just something that everybody would relate to, you know, the, the cookies, the candy, you know, mm-hmm. um, fun food and family. Yeah. But then toward the end, you know, you know, that we have to remember what this is all about, you know, and, but not, in a, it wasn't a condemning way, but just a reminder. Yeah. And then on the end, put, I put several uh, children's voices saying, you know, Merry Christmas. And one of them said, Merry Kissmas. And, <laughs> and uh, my granddaughter said at the very end, she is like, Matt, we twist must. We ended with that and with a big, boom. Yeah. <laughs> That's great yeah. that you got your grandchildren involved in everything. It, it was fun. How fun is that? <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, so fun. That's how it, re- yeah. yeah. You totally. know, some are sacred, you know, yeah. Yeah. some, uh, you know, and, and Christmas music, that one probably won't be, but a Christmas song can be timeless. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Amen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What's the name of the song? I wish it was Christmas today. Okay. Yeah. I had no idea that there were another. There was another song in uh, Saturday Night Live. I had no idea. You know, <laughs> theirs is a little more. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, but at least uh, if they're looking for theirs, hopefully they'll find mine on Spotify or something. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah. That's great. How about you guys? Yeah. Amanda, tell us about yours. Oh my gosh, um, you talk about the miracle. Like for me, it's all year right? Like it's the Christmas miracle. 
mm. the birth, the mystery. Yeah. And so um, I'm actually thinking of two songs on because they're so similar uh, and they're about the same thing. And I realized that's what happened. I wrote them. So two years ago, I had um, just this adventure with God. And he said, you're going to go on 21 days of just worshiping. And at that last day, he's like, you're going to do 24 hours. And at the end, I recorded this song, Promise You Ache. And it came from really my first encounter with him. And it was a promise he gave me. But he is a fulfillment of the ultimate promise, right? Absolutely, yeah. So for me, um, that's what it's about. And it was truly, that's the word, timeless, you know? Right. And so it was the ultimate message. But yet for me personally, it was, uh, you know, personal. It was a love story, you know? And he is the ultimate love story. Absolutely. So, and then this last year, wrote another song, and it was like the same thing. It was called The Christmas Miracle. So it's a completely different song. Awesome. And um, yeah, it was it was really awesome. So it was really, really special for me because to me it's an all year song. It's a it's forever. That's awesome. So yeah. Yeah. I bet you sing it well too. <laughs> Talk a little bit about you, you said you wrote two songs mm-hmm. and they both were about the miracle. Yeah. How, and you said it earlier before we actually started recording, but Christmas, you know, it's like, it's the same story. We want to tell it every year. Mm-hmm. Um, how do we tell it every year differently? Mm-hmm. What were some things that came out in your songs that it's the same story, but we're telling it differently? Absolutely. Gosh, I feel like for me, um, I'm thankful that I'm at a place um, where my writing is now just coming out of an authentic place of really worship an expression and a flow, you know, mm-hmm. you know, when I started writing, I don't know that it was really that way. Right. If it's like, oh, I want to try to write a song right. that people are going to love and hear. And, uh, but when it comes from a, your heart, it's just, it just comes out. That's the real song, right? Yeah. Amen. And so I think to answer your question, um, it's, it's, what was your question? I did lost it. So like when we, we like <laughs> when, when we write songs about Christmas, yeah. um, since that's the topic at hand, yeah. lots of times we get, yeah, we yeah. get hung Fresh. up in the same themes or yeah. the same yeah. things. And you, you already acknowledged it was about yeah. the same thing. How do you do it different? I feel like for me, it's like, it's, it's limitless and it's, and en- that's never that's ending true. how I can say it a different way. That's like true. for me, that's art, yeah. you know? And so mm-hmm. it just, it's like the way you look at a painting, right? Or like you, 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 there's so you, there's so much expression and life and color within us, and it, it's it's just never ending, and it comes out, and it and it's literally eternal for me. And so I can there's there's more than enough, like it, especially when you're at a place where you're allowing it to overflow. Yeah, and it's yeah. So I feel like that's. Hopefully that answers your question. That is kind of a miracle, isn't it? You know, how we can yeah. take the same 12 notes, use <laughs> yeah. a few little durations, pitches, <laughs> right? intervals, and come up with yeah. millions of songs yeah. or just a few basic colors and come up with millions of colors. Yeah. 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 You know, and there's so many topics when you think about the story of, of Jesus and the birth and, and all of the things that happen, all the events and all the characters that are involved and just all, the, all of that's, that's in play for writing these songs and... It seems like, just like when you're reading scripture, you read a scripture and all of a sudden something has come off the page you've never read before, or it's like it's hit you in a new way. It's true. And it happens all the time in songwriting, doesn't it? Especially Mm -hmm. when I found when I'm writing about the birth of Christ and that story, Mm -hmm. something is going to pop out that is different than popped out before. Yeah, exactly. That happens to me when I'm writing, I'm trying to write a a Christmas song or or in that regard. Um, It's amazing. How that it's never ending like you said it seems like it's limitless and it is somewhat of a an amazing thing that happens when you're reading when you're interacting with god's word yeah, yeah it's true. just like never ending revelation and it's just constantly unfolding yeah. and you're yeah. talking that's kind of why i saw things for bringing that to life yeah. true yeah. Yeah. yeah Ray, you've written a lot of songs too what i'm just curious like have you ever started writing a second song and being like oh it's too much like that one or how do i make this different or you know I think anytime you come up with a new song, not anytime, but there's sometimes you, you start writing a song and you go, 
is that somebody else's song? Right. You know, now we have Google, right? Now we can we can sing and see if someone else has that melody or that uh, that structure. Um, um, hit me with that question one more time, Matt, because I went somewhere with. Well, as you've yeah. written a lot of songs, have you ever felt like you wrote the same song twice? And if so, did how did you detour it to be its own song and it's make it, it different? I, you know, I'm not sure um, that I've done that. Um, I think probably. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but but when I sit down to write a song, I don't know what genre it's going to come from. It seems like a lot of times, you know. Oh, that's good. Um, you know, as far if somebody's going to be an artist, they need to kind of paint who they are, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe I lean more to the songwriter. I don't know. Um, I do love to sing, but and, and not that great at it, but I like, love to. But it's, when it comes to songwriting... Um, I appreciate all the genres. You know, we send it. We 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 seem to sometimes make fun of older worship or older styles or things. Uh, so I'm I'm, 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 I'm going around the Christmas tree here with your aunt, with your question. <laughs> That's great. Go for it. Um, <laughs> but I'm and you know recently in the last couple of years, um, you know, I guess I've written um, written worship, um, the hip hop Christmas song. Um, kind of country stuff, which I thought I would never absolutely positively, a little bit of rock stuff. And, you know, they're all Christian messages. Um, but that's the cool thing about, um, you, we don't have to paint ourselves in a corner, you know, with, a, with music. Um, it's so expressive. And, and we, we have so many audiences that we can reach uh, that, for example, I was asked a question a couple of years ago, would you write Southern Gospel? Would you write, a, and I'm like, I think when I got saved, that's probably the first song I heard was Southern Gospel. So yeah, I guess I would, you know. And so I attempted it. I think it came out a little more country. But I don't know if I've ever written a song that that two of them sounded alike um, because I just like to write a lot of different styles. And, and um, like, for example, if, if I'm listening to uh, worship has a certain sound, you know, um, or a lot of the modern worship has a certain sound. To me, that's a very difficult um genre to write fresh you know um does, does that make sense to me because there's a certain kind of sound to it and to write one that you go oh oh wow that hit me right here you know i think that's amazing when you hear those songs and i know i went around a lot of different thoughts with with your question um but to bring it down to this it's amazing um, when god gives someone whoever that is a song that the church goes and to hear a new Christmas song that you go, wow, yeah, wow, I'm I'm, I'm moved all over again. You yeah, know? yeah. You know? I like what you said. Though you said something about uh, when you start writing a song, you just kind of let it become what it you feel like it is. Yeah. Like you don't try to steer yeah. it or or yeah. I'm going to write this kind of song today. You just yeah. start creating. Yeah. And you start writing, and yeah, I, I love like, that. Yeah, kind of I like what you said. You know, um, uh, you were saying that it came from your heart. You wrote a song, mm. and sometimes we can cheapen songwriting by going, "Hey, today we're going to write this kind of song," you know, and that's good. That really is good. And sometimes we can be intentional about writing. Intentional writing is great. You know, this is why we're writing. This is the reason. This is the artist. This is the whatever. But it's amazing when God drops one in your heart, and it He doesn't. It. And it's kind of unintentional. You know, oh, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, you know. I guess you got a song, Roger. You know what that what I'm saying there. You know? Flow, yeah, yeah. It flows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, and um, I was thinking as well um, it, about the familiarity issue. I mean, there's so many times you hear a song, it's like, man, that sounds like this other song. Mm -hmm. But I have no problems with that at yeah. all. Right. It's, yeah. As a matter of fact, it almost feels better because yeah. I have this connection to that other song already, and now it's like, oh yeah, there's a vibe there that I'm right. connecting with, and. With with Christmas tunes, we already we like we already talked about. We want some of that familiarity already. Like we bring it in. The story is the same. You know these old is you know the uh, Santa and all those kind of things are all we all know about those things too. So I mean, it's like when you hear these things, you're like, yeah, it feels good. So I don't know. I it, sometimes I write a song. I think, but it kind of sounds like this one. Yeah. But I have to decide, and usually I decide I'm okay with that. Like it's cool. That's let's let's just keep rolling with it. That's cool. You know, I just think yeah. it's good. 
yeah. sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I think part of what makes a, a song successful, for lack of a better term, that where people grab hold of it and they make it their song is that familiar thing, you know, whether it's the convertible in the summertime, the lake, my experience with God, that's my song. I'm, I know when he did that to me. Yeah. Um, or whatever the case may be, Christmas time. Yeah. Um, but there is an element that every song that is successful that people grab hold of, I think it has that thing. Yeah. As that sound. Otherwise it becomes yeah. unrelatable. That's right? true. And then you're like, I don't, Absolutely. that's pretty. <laughs> because, exactly. But it doesn't provoke does anything it, inside of my heart yeah. to say yes and amen to. And where does it fit, right? And a yeah. Christmas worship song specifically, like we're expecting the story. Like, yeah. give it to me again. Cause it's yeah. like, if it's not there, you're like, how is this a Christmas song? <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, it, it's even more honed in in that, re- in that regard. Yeah. And then I think, you know, you have a, the classic song that, like, Mary, did you know, that would be like, oh, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. That song. So, you, you know, you have those kinds of tweaks, too, which I always appreciate. That that's kind of song, I appreciate the craft of it, too. But, oh, you spun it. Now we're looking at another facet, mm-hmm. you know, another character in the story. Wow. So, yeah. Well, how about you, Kendall? Tell us about a song. I thought we were going in order. But- <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. So this is this works well. So um, I think my favorite one that I've written is a song called 229 Years. Um, and you can't do the math in this song because someone pointed out to me later, it doesn't add up. But the opening line is, um, it's been 229 years since those words were said. And my grandfather's father was there to hear it. And so it, I get... I get sometimes, I think we get lost sometimes in the timelines of like, mm-hmm. hey, there's 400 years of silence yeah. between the words of Malachi and the birth of Jesus. Yeah. We don't think about that. And so you could live and die in that, knowing the promises, never seeing them come to oh, us. Yeah. So I sit down and wrote a song one time about passing the story on by generations mm-hmm. wow. and to watch for the signs and listen for the clues and hope in the good news. And that, that winds up just telling you exactly what's in Malachi. Mm. Um, so, but I, yeah. I, I just love it because That's of that yeah. originality of it. You know, I said, awesome. like I'm bragging. I'm not bragging on myself. I love the concept that was God. It was one of those things where it's like, you see it from another facet. Yeah. It's like, what about this? And I was like, oh, I had never thought about that. Yeah. But, you know, now I think more about timelines and things. And um, we're such a microwave culture. I think that's part of my concept in that is that we get caught up in the oh here it is oh and there it is and we're done yeah (laughs) and i think i mean i think we may be coming into a season two this is totally off topic of christmas but we may need more lament songs yeah we may need some more songs where people are going to be struggling and they need to know god's with them in the struggle yeah as opposed to it's going to be okay and i believe in miracle power because i do believe in that yeah but there's a timeline that sometimes we don't take into consideration there's a a friend um I co-wrote a song. Uh, he lives in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which is south there of Nashville. And the other writer was from uh, Florida. We wrote this last year, um, and the the song was we haven't yet titled it yet, but I think we're going to call it "A Silent Christmas." But it starts out by saying, um, "Sitting by the fireside, sitting and wondering why God took you away from me this Christmas." So it's a person yeah. dealing with yeah. Um, yeah. Their first Christmas without someone. Yeah. And uh, gosh, I almost cry. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, no, you, we cried so me. many times <laughs> as we were writing this. I mean, uh, and we still, when we talk about it, uh, so it should be finished here, here soon. Um, wow. But there are those real moments. And, and like the song you said you wrote, um, is it one that someone that you know, everybody's joining in, you know, a fa la la la, or is it one that you're sitting there going, Wow. It's a story. So it's one of those you're listening yeah. to, right? You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're kind of shaking your head going, wow, you know. But somebody's going to need that yes. in a moment, and they're going to hear it, and it's going to be exactly what they need. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's amazing. And I think, you know, personally, I, I, at the time that I wrote it, I've got four kids, and they were younger. And so I'm thinking passing down the stories, yes. passing, you know, like they were passed down to me. That's so there was, that was probably part of the personal thing that played its way out in that, too, then. But that's just also a concept that just throughout scripture of passing the story down generation to generation to generation. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. I love the song that you just mentioned because we don't always think of those people. Yeah. But as songwriters, yeah. do you ever think about 
I want to write a song for that demographic or that person yeah. or that yeah. that group, you know, that, um, yeah. as I love that. Yeah. that. It feels like a servant role of being a songwriter. I want, because so many of us have been in the room and been like, oh my gosh, that's my song. Mm-hmm. But are we thinking, I want to write a song for that group of people? What inspired that song was um, the person um, there from Tennessee. Um, he had just lost his brother-in-law like just a, um, 10 days before we were here on, the, on this go right. And so we were wondering, how does his, how does his wife feel, you know? And, uh, and then, then the story in, in the, uh, or the song in the chorus then would, would talk about, and one day when I see you, and, and angels are singing glory, hallelujah, you know, and, and what it would be like, what it's like for you there now. And then the, it went on, what it would be like when I'm there with you, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so, uh, sometimes Christmas is a tough time for people yeah. and, and what better way to relate in a song. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I just found out today that one of my college friends passed away, left his wife and his three kids mm. behind today. I found that out. And I oh. think about your song, it immediately went straight to them. I mean, there are so many families that go through that every yeah. year yeah. and what a blessing that would be. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. And then hit me great quick. Yeah. I've heard yours. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Tim. So you're left. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I want to talk about two, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, I'll talk about the first one. Uh, it's called What's a Christmas Eve Without My Baby? And it's uh, it's about a romantic setting yes. on Christmas Eve, which <laughs> I'm all about. Like, I sure. Jesus says you're the salt of the earth. And, uh, you know, and so I think that when we're with people, when we're out in the world, we need to be the seasoning of God, you know, bringing his love and mercy and kindness to the world. And, and I think that's good, you know. And so when we're bringing love and marriage kind of love and things like that into a I think it's a blessing. And so anyway, I've always, I always thought that was fun. I've always written in that, a lot of songs into yes. those kind of thoughts. And so this is a, it's a fun big band jazz song, nice. which is really fun. I mean, I listen recorded here and I just loved making that so it yeah. went from a piano to this massive thing which was really really fun but, uh, so I, that was a really fun one and I love that and but then there's a but my wife's favorite she would say which is probably my one of my favorites too is called come Lord Jesus and it's um it's really it's I wrote it for Advent and it's it's really anticipating his return you know yeah wanting him to come back but it's mm-hmm. um but man what do we do while he's gone, like what are, what are we doing while we wait kind of thing? And, and really mm-hmm. Jesus puts us on to, man, you've got talents, you've got, you've got the stuff I've given you. Now I, I want it. you to be at work with that. You know, we can't just be sitting on our hands. We I need to be it. serving and loving. And I mean, he even says in Matthew 25, you know, you know, we need to be with the sick and healing people or helping people and going to visit people in prison and all of those types of things, which we know very well. And then it brings in a lot of Revelation 21, you know, come Lord Jesus and all of that language yeah. if, um, if come all who are thirsty and those kinds of things. So it's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorites because it's so much of what I long for. Who, who. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's my favorite. Band. Loves that. It's cool. Yep. I've heard the big band one, which is great. I'm going to no. go find the other one. Awesome. Now. Well, I don't, I actually, it's not out yet. Oh, just, oh, well, yeah. We're going to have to fix that. I, I know we did it. Like I'm from an acapella tradition. So we arranged it for acapella. So there's churches that sing it mm-hmm. around the nation, which is cool, but. Um, I haven't recorded it yet, so I'm hoping to get that get that down soon. It'll be fun. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's cool that you say you wrote right romantic. Yeah. You know, or uh, I I started doing that a few years ago, and I, uh, I wrote what I thought. What do I do with this thing? You know, <laughs> I almost felt guilty for writing it. You know, went and got with a group of pastors and said, "What do you think I should do?" They said, "Sing it." And so I, you know, there's a. Uh, there's a um, book in the Bible called the Song of Solomon. Oh yeah, uh, there for a reason, you know, <laughs> right. and it's called yeah. Song, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, our, our part of our testimony, part of our being salt in the world, is saying, hey, what what your marriage looks like is important. Absolutely. If you're yeah. a believer, and yeah, so absolutely. what's my testimony? The way I love people, the way I treat my spouse, the way I love my kids, all of that is so part of our story that we need to write into. I think it's important. I do too. So yeah, I, mean, I, I heard somebody say the other day that. Um, I don't know that they were actually talking about the church. I think they were. But when we withdraw and we create the void, the world will fill it up real quick. Mm, yeah. And so we, we've got to be responsible and steward those things mm. better than we have in the past because we've left a lot of voids and 
we've seen them get filled really quick with yeah. ungodly things. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And I'm thinking of your voice, by the way, you know, uh, we got all these male guys. I'm thinking of your voice, yeah. how you sing. And um, the same writer, one of the writers we got together recently wrote another Christmas song. And uh, another, the lady was from the Nashville area. She's like an arranger, like deluxe. It's like, oh my goodness. So when I'm scratching out lyrics, she's over there typing, you know, in, in manuscript. I'm like, it's just fun. <laughs> but, but it came out more angelic. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking what it sounds like many times to have a, a lady's voice mm-hmm. singing that angelic Christmas song, you know. Yeah. Um, it almost makes you think of heaven, you know. That, yeah. mm-hmm. Or even children's voices, you know. Yes. Uh, we maybe maybe we should write a children's, you know, Christmas. Yeah. And, um, mm-hmm. and, um, that's great. Anyway, yeah. That, yeah. that's an interesting question that I popped in my head of when you guys write songs. How exciting is it for you to hear not just a congregation or other people sing it, but another artist or another choir or mm-hmm. something like that? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I, like I think it may be one of the biggest compliments to me as a writer that someone else would want to sing yeah. my song. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Has it happened to you? I mean, well, it, it just a little bit at church or, yeah. you know, different yeah. places. But, yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's something, there's something that you just feel like, um, man, the Lord has has used you in a special way somehow to, to bring this song about, yeah. to yeah. bless the church, which is yeah. probably the same prayer you've been praying for a long yeah. time that I've been praying of. Yeah. Uh, Lord, you just use me in this way. And if there's a way that, that if there's songs that, that need to be, you know, written that I can help with, that kind of thing. And, and, and when you see other people sing those things or do those things, it's like, man, it's just confirmation that the Lord has been working through us, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that really is the pay, you know, because being a songwriter is really lucrative business. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best jokes. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's just something, it's something inside, um, I think it's, you know, it's given from the Lord. You know, I know sometimes we blame some songs on him. The Lord gave me this one. (laughs) But it has to be a gift that he gives because you can't turn it off sometimes. Sometimes it's in the middle of the night and and, and you're, I'm I'm writing a song in my sleep. Yes. You know, Um, Mm -hmm. I was laughing at my wife and I I try to bounce a lot of lyrics off of her, you know. Um, She doesn't consider herself a songwriter, but the other night she said that, um, it's funny because she was a little bit um, ticked at me um, earlier that, that the evening, and she said that she kept waking up hearing the song, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And she la- and she woke up laughing. You know, I said, well, I think you've probably gotten that songwriter anointing probably. And, uh, you're here to, if you're here to your sleep. And, uh, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, so are there any, any song lyrics, I'm just curious, are there any song lyrics in Christmas songs that kind of pop out to you that have been special to you? Are there, I'm kind of throwing a, song, throwing a question out there about, mm-hmm. um, on, on the spot, but I'm just curious if, if there are certain lyrics that you think, man, those have meant a lot to me over the years mm-hmm. in this certain song. Or, um, maybe a song that's been out. Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. something yeah. that somebody wrote, somebody else wrote that has been mm-hmm. back to you there. Yeah. You know, I just sang Grown Up Christmas List. Mm-hmm. And I grew up singing that song. I feel like, you know, growing up, I sing a lot of songs that I really didn't really identify with, sure. you know? Yeah. And it's like now, now you understand. wow, yeah. Yeah. you know? Um, so Amy Grant? Yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah. 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 I just covered the Kelly Clarkson version, but, you know, it's the same song, right? Mm-hmm. Just a different key. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, it was, it, so it's, it, I have to hold it together, you know? It's one of those songs, and it really oh, gets wow. gets to my dad, you know, too. Yeah. And so it's a special, special song that um, really just continues to mean more to me yeah. every year. That everyone knows. Yeah. But there's a lot of depth there. No, totally. So. I mean, the older my kids get, the more meaningful that one becomes. Yeah. 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 The food. Yeah. Dad. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it definitely resonates with where I am in my heart. I think it's cool that um, Mark Lowry wrote probably one of the most well-known songs, you know. Um, you said it before, um, Mary, did you know? Mm. Um, I, I saw he, he and um, the Gaithers were actually in town recently, and he told, um, they were, Mark is also a comedian, and he told um, 
Bill Gaither said, well, when you write a song like Mary, Did You Know, you won't have to write any more songs. <laughs> you know? yeah. And what a song. It's been recorded by so many people in you know, secular artists. I think that's amazing. Um, personally, I love, I love leading the song Noel. You know, uh, I feel like it just, it's kind of like, um, you know, the old rugged cross. It's got, it's just got feeling to it when you sing it. It's like, uh, you know, if the notes bend and you can feel. You know, mm-hmm. to me, Noel, Noel is a very strong, moves me song. You know, uh, Sunday, uh, this last Sunday, we also sang the one that, an old song, Emmanuel. His name is called Emmanuel. And it's just like it came, it's like, God's with us. You know, it just, the meaning of Christmas just jumped off those old lyrics, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. How about you guys? What, what songs? I mean, I'm not good on the spot, but um, whenever Joy to the World comes around, hmm. and, yeah. and it's not even verse it, one, it's more like verse three and verse four, you know. <laughs> no more, I'm going to go to the lyrics because I'm terrible with my memory. Um, sorrow and yes, or yes, sin and sorrow, sin and sorrow. The, 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 the curse, Lord, anyways, yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it goes as far as the curse is found. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's so it's just that redemptive nature of what's happening what in the song? atmosphere in the world that you know. What a song! It just feels it the, from that songwriting craft. That song just mm. captures all the majesty and the power of what we celebrate, little baby Jesus in the manger. Mm. <laughs> in, and that song also, I've heard, I've heard it said it, it refers to the second coming as well. You know? Yeah, which got me thinking. Uh, I mean, you go back and look at those lyrics again. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, someone asked me the asked the question recently. I said, "What song is one of the most famous Christian Christmas songs that's not really about Christmas?" And they said that without. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. It is to me. You know, <laughs> but I want to go back and look at those lyrics. You know, mm-hmm. so maybe it's talking about yeah this coming and this. I don't know. I have to go back and look. What yeah. powerful song. Mm-hmm. The, the the element that of, and I think this is one of those ways we can revisit Christmas and write more and more songs about Christmas yeah. and them different, is that element of the now and not yet, mm-hmm. theologically. Yeah. Um, and that may be where that is, yeah. and joy to the yeah. world, is the now and not yet. Yeah. Um, Love that. Because we celebrate the Advent, you mentioned earlier, you know, that we remember the coming, but we're also looking to the coming yeah. again. Yeah. And so we embrace that spiritual dynamic. Yeah. Uh, yep. mm-hmm. Amazing. Huh. Yeah. It's beautiful. I, I would say my favorite, um, hey, it's hard to pick, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, and I asked the question. So, amazing. But, but some of the lyrics of um, angels we, you, we have heard on high, yeah. sweetly singing that song. Mm. Uh, so it's I, I think it's, I think I connect it with, being in a pageant when I was a kid and, you know, and being a shepherd and having you a fair for I was when I was a kid. Yeah. Like a long, like long time ago. Um, yeah. Back in New Jersey. Come on. But um, man, I think I just love, I love that the scene of that song and the shepherds and, and just hearing the voice of the, um, of the angels. And, um, and then recently the chosen came out with, uh, oh. with, with that, with the, uh, when when they came out with the pilot shepherd thing, have you ever seen the Christmas section? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I just love that so much. Yeah. So anyway, I just yeah. that song every year when we sing it in in worship, I just I'm all in. I love it. Yeah, so it's beautiful. We can't all forget Old Holy Night too. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that was I feel like a really big one. Beautiful, beautiful song. Yeah, that's probably one of the most That's-angelic. epic. Mm, it is yeah. angelic. Exactly, it is angelic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Of course, sheer kind of. <laughs> a little spin on it. Oh, oh. You know, you know. <laughs> I think it's but, Celine. You know. but, yeah. <laughs> but it's still, you know. Yeah. It doesn't matter who sings it, it's still, yeah. still sacred and Exactly. Powerful. Yeah. yeah, I feel like it's divinely inspired and it's yeah. It's straight from heaven. Absolutely. Yes. That's, that's the song that last Wow, isn't that all of our prayer? Lord, give me a song mm-hmm. from heaven, you know. Yeah. Uh, one from you. Yeah. Not one I have to blame on you that. <laughs> yeah. mm. Oh, Lord, give me that one. You know, well, no, man. Uh, those sil- songs, Christmas songs are timeless. Exactly. And we can sing them every mm-hmm. year. Incredible. And we're moved yeah. every year. And they touch every generation. And oh. we'll continue to write songs as generations go on yeah. that will influence. Yes. Wow. Yes. 
beyond our time. Yep, just got to keep writing them. This has been a lot of fun, and yeah. I've really enjoyed the conversations about songs and Christmas. So we yeah. should sing a song. That Let's do it. Yeah. Or two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Christmas song. Guys, you too. Yeah, hey, great to be with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah,